Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about OPT, Open Pre-trained Transformer Language Models from Facebook. Let's get started. So what is OPT and why do we need OPT model? Right? So um, by July 2022, people started understanding that large language models are super important. They started showing super awesome gains across various natural language, uh, natural language tasks. Right? Uh, however, many of these LLMs were available only through APIs. No access is granted to the full model weights, and therefore it makes difficult to study these models in more detail. That is the reason why Facebook came up with this project, Open uh, OPT, Open Pre-trained Transformers. These are decoder-only pre-trained transformer models ranging from 125 million to 175 billion parameters. So the largest model, OPT-175 billion, is in fact comparable to GPT-3 while requiring only one seventh the carbon footprint to develop or train this model. Uh, all other models are publicly available uh, as checkpoints, which you can download from their GitHub page. However, the OPT-175 billion model is available uh, upon request by filling out a simple form. It was made available starting May 2022. Uh, the OPT model family has been coded in MetaSeq uh, and it has been trained using a large infra of 992 80GB 800 GPUs. Here are the statistics about these different uh, model checkpoints in the family. So as you see, the smallest model is comparable to a base model. So it's a 125 million model with 12 layers. However, the largest model 175 billion has like 96 layers with a very large model dimension size as well. OK, so what is OPT model pre-trained on? Well, it's pre-trained on a large corpus, which is a concatenation of data sets used in Roberta, the pile, and pushshift.io Reddit benchmark data sets. Uh, these are the five different uh, concatenated data sets uh, which are used so as to pre-train OPT. It contains books corpus, which contains more than 10K unpublished books, uh, CC stories, common crawl stories, which is a subset of common crawl data set filtered to match story like style of Vinograd schemas, the pile corpus and the several subsets of the pile corpus like pile CC open web text to USPTO patents data set, uh, um, project Gutenberg data set, open subtitles, Wikipedia and so on. Push shift.io Reddit data set and then CC news v2, which is a revised version of the CC data set, common crawl data set, which was used in Roberta. So it has these five different interesting data sets. Uh, as you can see, a large part of it is actually from Reddit and therefore a whole bunch of bias and toxicity that exists in those social media conversations also make it to the pre-training of OPT model. Mainly uh, the uh, pre-training data set is English only. And uh, overall, if you look at the data set, it has about 180 billion tokens, so pretty large data set, uh, which is about 800 GB in size. So how does OPT model compare with GPT? So they perform two kinds of evaluation, zero shot evaluation and few shot evaluation uh, on 16 different NLP tasks. So these tasks consist of uh, uh, popular benchmark data sets like Hella Swag, Story Close, Pika, uh, Arc, Easy and um, Challenging, um, um, Open Book QA, Vinograd, Vinograd and Superglue. Um, as you can see, they have compared uh, between OPT and GPT models, OPT and GPT models and several different shots in the few shot setting. So one shot, 32 shot, and so on. Okay. They use the same prompts as GPT-3 so as to remain comparable. Um, so uh, on zero shot, it can be observed that OPT largely sort of matches the performance of GPT-3 across different parameter sizes. However, the performance varies greatly uh, per task. Uh, so performance roughly actually matches with GPT-3 for 10 different tasks and underperforms in three different tasks. OPT underperforms in three different tasks. Again, if you look at the performance from one shot and few shot perspective, so here the dotted curves are for GPT, the solid curves are for OPT. What one observes is that OPT performance for one and few shot lags bit behind GPT slightly, but performance really depends heavily per task. In the same set of 10 tasks that we talked about in zero shot, uh, well, the performance is similar. Uh, however, then the performance sort of degrades for some of those tasks and is somewhat better for some other tasks. So more or less net net, it is uh, pretty similar in terms of uh, uh, performance, uh, whether it is zero shot or few shot multi shot, uh, you know, uh, compared to GPT-3. Now specifically, they evaluate on dialogue modeling across five different data sets, uh, Conversation AI2, uh, Wizard of Wikipedia, Empathetic Dialogues, Blended Scale Task, Wizard of Internet Data Set. So these five different data sets. They report results on two different metrics, perplexity and unigram F1. 
And they also compare with uh, three other uh, baseline methods. One of them is Reddit 2.7 billion, which is also an unsupervised method. However, they also compare with Blenderbot method, which is uh, which is basically Blender uh, trained pre-trained on two different kinds of data sets. So Blenderbot one, as well as its pre-training counterpart, Reddit 2.7b. 2.7 2.7b. Yeah. Uh, they also compare uh, with R2C2, so which is fine tuned on the R2C2 data set, R2C2 Blender part, which is fine tuned on R2C2 uh, data set. So, what is observed is that OPT uh, 17, uh, OPT 1. Uh, 175 billion, so the largest OPT model, significantly outperforms the, the Reddit 2.7 billion unsupervised baseline. So, if you look at these numbers, perplexity will lower the better, right? Unigram F1, the higher the better. And what is observed is that uh, OPT 175 billion significantly outperforms uh, uh, Reddit 2.7 billion uh, on both perplexity and Unigram F1. And it performs competitively with the fully supervised Blender Bot 1 model. So besides this table, uh, what is not shown in the table is also evaluation on multi-session chat data set. So multi-session chat or MSC data set uh, is uh, a persona kind of a data set, right, where the bot persona and the user persona are also included. So it is observed that OPT actually provides a perplexity of 9.7, which is lower, as you observe, compared to any of these uh, five data sets, and a Unigram F1 of 0.177, which is comparable. So it, which indicates that the model is generalizing well across multiple persona chat kind of data sets as well. Let us talk about how does OPT model fare on bias and toxicity evaluations. So they tried and, and hit speech as well. So essentially they tried to experiment with four different uh, settings, four or five different settings, which we'll talk about next. So for hit speech detection, they evaluated on the ethos data set. Uh, they measured the, uh, which, which measures the ability to identify uh, whether or not certain English statements are racist uh, or, or the ability of the model to identify whether or not uh, certain English statements are racist or sexist or neither. So they evaluate across different setups. So zero shot setup, one shot setup, few shot binary setup, or few shot multi-class setup. So the few shot multi-class setup, basically uh, the model is asked to provide a yes, no, or neither response. Binary setup, the model is just asked to provide a yes or no response. So they compare with the Da Vinci model as well. And what is observed is that in comparison with the text Da Vinci, uh, the GPT-3 model, uh, they observe that F1 scores of detecting hate speech uh, are, are better for OPT uh, 175 billion compared to the Da Vinci model. Now, to do uh, to do uh, bias evaluation, they work with the Crow's S, uh, with the Crow S pairs data set, uh, where uh, the idea is to measure intra sentence level biases in nine different categories: gender, religion, race or color, sexual orientation, age, nationality, disability, physical appearance, and socioeconomic status. Now, in this particular data set, each example contains of a pair of sentences uh, regard, uh, representing a stereotype or anti-stereotype regarding a, a certain group. Uh, the goal is to measure uh, the model preference towards stereotypical expressions. So if the, uh, if the score that you see here is higher, that indicates a higher bias. So therefore, lower scores are actually preferred. Now, unfortunately, the news is that, uh, well, uh, on average, OPT actually has higher score, which basically means that it is more biased compared to GPT-3. So OPT-175 billion, the largest OPT model, appears to exhibit more stereotypical bias in almost all categories except for the religion category, where uh, you know it sort of uh, uh, outperforms GPT-3 by, by some margin. However, everywhere else, um, it, is, it is actually more biased compared to the GPT-3 model. Further bias evaluation is done using stereo set data set. So stereo set, uh, the difference is that uh, um, uh, the, the cross, cross pairs data set only does an intra sentence evaluation. Stereo set actually measures uh, um, stereotypical bias at the inter sentence level um, across uh, four different categories, profession, gender, religion, and race. Now stereo set actually uh, involves uh, a score called as the ICAT score, idealized context association test score, which is a combination of uh, the language modeling score and the stereo stereotype score. So of course the language modeling score, you want it to be as high as possible. You want a very good language model, but you want the uh, lowest stereotype, stereotype score. And ICAT score is a trade-off combination of the two. So you would uh, expect ICAT score to be higher, uh, language modeling score to be higher, the stereotype score to be lower. And what is observed across different uh, uh, categories here is that DaVinci and OPT 175 billion parameter exhibit similar ICAT scores. 
Da Vinci outperforms on profession and race, as you can see on profession and, and race, you see Da Vinci outperforms, while OPT's 175 billion sort of outperforms on gender and religion. Also, what is observed is OPT 175 billion performs better on the stereotype score, uh, while Da Vinci actually performs outperforms on the language modeling score. So net net uh, trade off, you know, I can score wise, both of them seem to be pretty similar. One more toxicity evaluation is on real toxicity prompts. And uh, here the idea is to evaluate the model, the tendency of the model to respond with toxic language. So it, uh, of course, depends on whether your prompt is toxic or not. And what is observed is that, yes, uh, uh, well, they compare with two other baseline models. So OPT is com compared with DaVinci and Palm model. And what is observed is that uh, all three models have increased likelihood of generating toxic continuations as the toxicity of the prompt increases. However, what is also important to observe is that the blue line is actually higher compared to the orange and the green line, meaning OPT 175 billion has a higher toxicity rate compared to Palm or DaVinci which is not such a great use for OPT 175 billion. So OPT 175 billion, uh, you know, th these folks also evaluate uh, on dialogue safety. So uh, uh, using two different uh, evaluation data sets, safer dialogues and safety bench unit tests. Safer dialogues actually measures the ability to recover from explicit safety failures, usually in the form of apologizing or recognizing its mistake right? for a chatbot. Right? Uh, while safety uh, bench unit, unit tests measure uh, how unsafe a model's response is stratified across four different levels of topic sensitivity, uh, safe, realistic, unsafe, and adversarial. So there are four different subsets. And of course, uh, uh, what you want is, uh, um, uh, is, is, is higher values are better. Higher values are better for safe dialogues, uh, safer dialogues, while, uh, well, I mean, safer dialogues has two matrix, perplexity and F1. So perplexity lower the better, F1 higher the better. Uh, for all of these unit tests, clearly lower the better, lower the better. So. Um, uh, you know, a lower unsafety is better. So if the model generates less unsafe responses, it's better, right, across all the four different subsets. So what is observed from this table? Well, they compare with the, the same three baselines, uh, rated 2.7 billion unsupervised baseline, Blender Part 1 and R2C2 uh, Blender Part, which are supervised Blender Part fine-tuned models. So what the what they observe is that OPT 175 billion has similar performance as the rated 2.7 billion model, while uh, uh, it has, uh, uh, while, uh, while, uh, you know, uh, but then, you know, in some cases, like, uh, uh, like uh, in the safe uh, uh, subset of the safety bench unit test and adversarial subset, it seems like it is actually performing way better compared to the rated 2.7 billion data set. Now, clearly, models which are fine tuned on curated dialogue data sets like Blender Part 1 and R2C2, well, they have overall low toxicity. So uh, that's there. I mean, uh, you know, it, since they're specifically fine-tuned for dialogue safety uh, or dialogue-related models, cleaner dialogue mo dialogue data sets, uh, they perform better. So OPT 175 billion also comes with other kinds of limitations, just like many other large language models. Uh, it does not work well with declarative inst instructions or point blank intro uh, interrogatives. It tends to be repetitive in nature and can easily get stuck in a loop. It actually can also produce factually incorrect statements, and it has a high propensity to generate toxic uh, language and reinforce harmful stereotypes, even when it is provided with a innocuous uh, prompt, a safe prompt. And adversarial prompts are pretty easy to find. So therefore, those are some of the limitations when you are planning to use OPT-175 billion model. Net, net, you know, uh, OPT-175 billion model is actually a pretty good model because it's an open model, so you can use it. However, it comes with these limitations. So you have, you have to be mindful about uh, the bias, stereotypical, uh, stereotypical bias, uh, toxicity, and all of these limitations. Here are some examples of generations from the OPT model. It's a very interesting poem, uh, you know, which is generated by the OPT model on performance summary cycle at work. Um, it's an interesting, interesting poem, so you may want to uh, sort of pause the video and uh, read through the poem. Uh, it can also generate uh, chat dialogues between, uh, let's say, a curious human and Statue of Liberty. So it's sort of acting as a Statue of Liberty and has been, it's sort of saying that, yes, I've been here since 1886 and I was built to welcome immigrants to US. I like red, white and blue colors and so on and so forth. It is also it has also been evaluated on code generation, so uh, it can generate some simple pieces of code, Python code. Um, people also have tried it on translation, so it can actually do some uh, good English to Chinese translation. People have also tried to use it for uh, language generation as such, and specifically, you can also call it paper writing. So, yeah, so this is some sort of a paper written about breakthroughs in deep neural networks. 
So that's that. Uh, so let me quickly summarize the video. Uh, we talked about OPT model, uh, family of models, which is a collection of transformer decoder large language models from 125 million size to 175 billion parameters. It was built to replicate the performance and size of GPT-3 class of models and does so fairly well. Um, it is actually pretty efficient from a training perspective and the models are publicly available. So that's the great point. It performs comparably in number of NLP tasks and dialogue settings. However, uh, there are uh, limitations in terms of bias, toxicity, and hate speech. So those have to be kept in mind when you try to use these models. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, connect with me on my LinkedIn or uh, watch my research on my homepage. Thank you.